Green back at the moment. Let's bring in Mark Bailey over at Fig Securities in Sydney. Appreciate your time in, you know, terrible weekend, obviously, for everyone in the UK. Terrible three months, three attacks in the last three months. And no surprise to see some of these strong rhetoric coming from Theresa May, but vowing it won't impact uh, the election timetable, Mark. Yeah, good morning, James. Um, I guess there was a bit of debate uh, in the immediate aftermath whether they should postpone the UK election, but that's still scheduled to uh, to keep to the uh, the original timetable, which I think is the right thing to do. Uh, it, it's obviously going to have an impact in terms of how people vote. I mean, generally, security matters seems to swing voters towards the Tories. And I think part of the weakness that you are seeing in Stirling is not just down to the, the terrorist attack on, uh, on London on, on Saturday night, but also due to the fact that the, the polls are becoming a bit closer with, with Labour gaining and giving up um, some of the, the leads uh, of the Tories. So this, I, this, I think yeah, this seems extraordinary, just looking at the polls. I appreciate it's a YouGov poll and you've a couple of them and you see some of the other pollers suggesting it's not as narrow as, as these YouGov polls might suggest, but even so, from when she announced the election um, and the overwhelming support and numbers that she had to where they are now, it's in such a short space of time, has been baffling. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, there's been a lot of um, inside uh, thinking in terms of the Tory campaign and where they've gone wrong. And I think you've seen that come out in terms of Theresa May actually kind of uh, almost personally attacking Corbyn and some of the policies, especially going strong on the nuclear deterrent and the uh, UK submarines, the tridents as well. But in terms of the overall polls, absolutely, you know, some is showing that it's within the margin of error, so we may mm. even get a hung parliament. And if that happens, the, the, the key factor for the markets will be that it will ser seriously damage the UK's bargain in position in any kind of Brexit negotiations and weaken their hand. So I think you'll see potentially weaker sterling. At the moment, the sterling uh, strength is, is largely seen and uh, trending in terms of the conservative lead in the polls. And if that falls, as you've seen, you know, you do see some weakness coming through in sterling. Um can we just uh, bring it back locally, Mark, and I want to mention, well, talk about the, the week ahead because it is a pretty big week. We've got a whole avalanche of data. We've got the RBA tomorrow, but importantly, we have those GDP figures. I mean, some of the data recently has been pretty messy um, leading up to this. Just talk us through what sort of response we are watching as we do await for, for those um, GDP figures. Yeah, look, I think it's, I think it's going to be really interesting before we get to the GDP figures on Wednesday, what the RBA actually talks about in, in its statement, whether it does, as you say, acknowledge some of those weaker economic data points that we have had and whether or whether it's still certainly looking uh, through the rose-tinted glasses and talking about the uh, the glass half full rather than acknowledging some of the weaker figures. I think, you know, in terms of the GDP GP print in, uh, in for Q1, we're expecting 0.3% uh, uh, quarter on quarter, 1.6 for the year, and there has been some some economists saying that we may even touch into uh, into mm. negative territory and if that happens again you're going to see a bit more pressure building and you have seen that in the markets for the RBA to cut further down the line that that chance has doubled um, to, to 20 percent since the May meeting be on the back of this weaker data that we have seen domestically and I think that's probably right and if it continues then I think that groundswell even though it's not consensus will continue to grow that the next move actually in, in, in rates won't be higher but will be potentially a cut in terms of uh, forecasts for potential negative prints, NAB are uh, one of those predicting a, um, a fall of 0.1 per cent. And they've been pretty spot on in the past, the National Australia Bank. Um, how big a blow do you think that would be? People talk to, you know, seasonal impacts that will be captured in these numbers, or do you think it's a bit of a, a shot across the bow? Look, I, th I think, again, it just indicates and highlights, you know, and probably consolidates some of the weaker data that we've had. You know, had weak CapEx, construction data's mm -hmm. been a bit softer, you know, house prices may be starting to, um, to hold up where they are at the moment. So, again, you know, I think in the terms of the, the overall picture, I think it just acknowledges the fact that we've actually had a pretty, um, you know, soft first quarter, and that's probably domestically as well as globally as well. And, you know, it's unlikely to turn around in the second half of the year. And at least the RBA has got a bit of ammunition in, in the tank still to potentially could if it needs to, whereas a lot of other central banks in the world don't have that uh, left in the, in the tank. Um, on that, yeah, I mean, obviously having that elbow room, we'll have a bit more of an idea, though, when the RBA meets uh, tomorrow. Largely not expecting any sort of move, though. As always, though, it's going to be the commentary, isn't it, from the RBA? Yeah, I think that's right. I think, you know, I think probably all the economists are expecting no change. That's certainly my view. And it, it's going to be around, you know, whether there's any 
talk in terms of the currency, obviously maybe slightly lower than we were when we met uh, in May last uh, last month. Uh, any kind of commentary in terms of the housing market and, and the macro prudential rules, which, as I said, do seem to be at the edges slowing down and taking a bit of um, you know, sting out of the property market in Sydney and Melbourne again. We, although having said that, we did see kind of reasonable auction results at the weekend. Um, but again, you know, you are seeing softness in, in certain areas. We did have a bit of a bounce in retail sales uh, compared to the, the weakness that we saw in the prior months as well. So it's been a bit of a mixed bag. But, you know, the RBA seems to have been very keen to you know, focus on the positives and almost sweep the negatives under the, under the carpet. But at some stage, it's going to have to acknowledge, I think, that we are seeing a bit of a, a mixed uh, read on the data side of things. And that's got to come through, hopefully, in the commentary. And if that does, then I think you will see market expectations shift again further for potential rate cuts uh, at the back end of this year. All right, fantastic. Mark will be watching all of that with a lot of interest. Do appreciate you joining us. Have a good start to the week. Thanks, Leanne. You too. Well, for you business travellers out there, let's check the latest weather forecast.